Hey, my name is Thomas and if you watched my last video, you saw me shooting this beautiful Leica M6. Uh, this is a 4000 euro setup, a used Leica M6 plus 50mm uh, Leica Zoomicron lens. So I promised to you, I will show you some nice alternatives and I've got this. This is a Canon rangefinder camera with a beautiful Canon 50mm lens and this comes at around 400 euros. So I'm super excited to give this one a try as well. Let's have a go. Now, Canon's rangefinder history goes almost as far back as Leica. So the first Leica with interchangeable lenses with the Leica thread mount was sold in 1932 and the first Canon rangefinder appeared in 1933. And Canon made rangefinders all the way until 1968. This one's a 1958, it's the model 5L. And if you want today, if you're shopping for a Canon rangefinder camera with a somewhat modern rangefinder system, you either want a 5 series the 6 series, 7 series or the Canon P which is uh, maybe the most well-known model of them all. Now, Canon rangefinders are uh, also known as Leica copies as is almost every rangefinder camera. Uh, remember that the original screw mount Leica is the camera, the original 35mm camera and nearly everyone copied it. And for example, you see that this camera has its tripod socket here at the side. Typical Leica trademark. It doesn't make any sense. It's the worst position you can ever imagine for a tripod socket. But Leica did it in 1925 and everyone else was just copying it. Uh, also, the shutter mechanism is more or less a copy of the Leica's. Uh, it works very well. It's 1 over 1000th uh, top speed and I think it's a 50th of a flash sync speed or something like that. Um, the whole bottom half of these Canon rangefinder cameras is basically almost the same. So it's the top half uh, of the Canon rangefinder cameras where things differ and every model has a different rangefinder viewfinder system. As I said, this is the 5L. This is a pretty old system. Uh, it comes from 1956. And the cool thing is you've got uh, three different magnifications in your viewfinder. So it's a real zoom finder, something like I could never make. And it's a really cool uh, system because it allows you to shoot 35 millimeter with a smaller viewfinder image and then 50 mil on the standard size. And then you've got the third setting for a rangefinder for the spot where you're focusing so it's more precise. Uh, they did a similar system in the six models, but those have a much bigger viewfinder. So if you're on the market today, maybe you want a six model over a five model. Then they've got the Model P that's got one fixed magnification in the viewfinder and then three different frame lines and the model 7 which is the last model that has switchable frame lines in a similar fashion maybe to Leica. So the technical similarity between these two cameras is kind of striking because they both go back to the same original design again. Canon, as many others, started by sort of copying Leica screw mount technology in the 1930s. And Leica themselves, the M Leica, is of course just a huge uh, improvement 
over the Skruma Leica, but they still were using the same technology and it's a very similar shutter system. Uh, basically, the viewfinder is the big new thing about the Leica M and it's also the thing where it really beats the Canon, at least the Model 5. Okay, now there is something for you to laugh and this is how to load film in your Leica M6. It's not like you can open the back. You can only open the bottom plate. And then you see here, this drum has these three holes and here's a picture of how you insert the film into it. Okay? You can open by the way this to just have a look. So, take out the film. It was maybe a little bit too much. This is my second roll of film on the M6. I think this is good. Insert. It like this. You can have a look here that it engages with these cogwheels. And it works. Two blind exposures, that's normal. You see this rotate and you're ready to shoot. Um, all Leicas have this system. The oldest screw mount Leicas don't even have the removable, uh, the opening backplate, so you have to insert it like this and you cannot see if it's engaged or not. And this is also one of the reasons why they have this stupid uh, tripod socket here instead of there. They never find a solution for that. Okay, this camera doesn't have a light meter and Leica M2, M3, M4 also won't have a light meter. Only the M5 and M6 and M7 have it. So, Sunny 16 to the rescue. Uh, I'm photographing something that's in the shade. I go for F4, well, maybe between uh, 2.8 and 4 because I'm shooting yellow filter and 125th of a second I'm on Ilfa Delta 100 black and white film. And that's it. The lens I've got on my camera is a little bit older than the camera itself. This is the 50 f 1.8 and it came out in 1952 and it's got this old style chrome barrel. And note, bad thing about all rangefinder cameras, close focus is about 3.5 feet, that's about one meter. That's very bad, but that's what uh, rangefinders always have. They always have a horrible close focus. If you want to use external finders, the Canon 5 and 6 series cameras have something very, very cool. And you see this little ball here in the uh, flash mount. And when I focus the lens, you see that it retracts and now it comes back. So if you get an original Canon accessory finder for your uh, rangefinder lens, this will be the automatic parallax correction. Um, I showed this feature to some of my friends who shoot Leica M and they were like, wow, Canon could do this. Leica never did it. This is really a cool feature apparently. So uh, let's compare these two cameras. I've got Ilfa Delta 100 in each of them and I went out in Cologne already and took a couple of shots the same shots with both cameras. I'm going to show them in this video and uh, A will be the one camera and B will be the other camera. So it's up to you to guess which camera with which camera I took which uh, shot. In the end of the video I will show you which camera was A and which camera was B.
Okay, now I'm going to take a picture of the ships here in the harbor. And again, Sunny 16 tells me it's about F11, maybe at 125th of a second. There is a little bit of shade, so I go F8. And then I've got yellow filter, I go between 5.6 and 8. Let's do it. And I have to go here. bad thing is, but many rangefinder cameras have this problem, it depends on the lens. This sunshade gets really in the way in your viewfinder, so the bottom right corner of your frame you're never going to see in the viewfinder. But that can also happen on the Leica M6. Fun fact, uh, it's not a new thing that Canon introduces a new model every couple of months. Uh, they already did it back then. So 1956 saw the first camera with this type of viewfinder. It was called the Canon 5T. T was meaning trigger advance. You didn't have the level like here, but instead you had a trigger that you would pull out from here and then ch -ch 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 advance your shots. Then there was a succession of more cameras. The 5L, which the L was uh, stand for lever advance. Then they had the L1, the L2, the 5L2. And they also had a 5T Deluxe. And all these cameras, only different, very small things, like sometimes the self timer is missing, sometimes it's only one over 500th of a second top speed. Uh, the ones with the T have this trigger advance, as I just said before. Um, and also there was a more important change. This is the 5L, and this is the first one that got a metal shutter. Before that, they had cloth shutters. Leica still makes cloth shutters in 2022, but Canon and also Nikon decided back then it's a good idea to have a more durable metal shutter. Having said that, the metal shutters of these cameras are super durable, but they often have kinks in them. If you're not very careful when you put in your film or you touch it with your finger, it will get easily kinked. So beware of that. Many shutters already have kinks in them. The good thing is they will still work flawlessly. It's almost never a problem. Uh, the Canon 5 series rangefinders are, by the way, the last ones to have this split control, like again, something similar to the old Screwman Leicas. That means the fast shutter times uh, between one thousandth of a second and sixtieth of a second and flash sync there on this dial. And if you want to go a slow shutter time, you put this on 30 to 1 and now the slow times are on this front dial. And note this camera also has the T setting. That's especially amazing. That means you can take really long time exposures without um, a cable release. If you put it on T and you press the shutter button, the shutter just remains open for as long as you wish until you just turn it slightly and then it will close. Lens mount, that's another aspect uh, that's very important if you are looking for your own rangefinder system. So these Canon cameras, they use the Leica thread mount like the original Barnack Leicas do. So the original 
Canon lenses like this lens, some of them are just amazing. And keep in mind that the older ones with the chrome barrel also have beautiful fit and finish. If you want modern glass, Folklander has made some offerings in the past, around the year 2000 when they started rangefinder lenses. They did some in M39 or L39 mount, like a thread mount, I should say. Apart from that, you also have a lot of Russian and Ukrainian lenses from the age of the Soviet Union. The quality is sometimes not as good, but they are certainly the most affordable. And that's it uh, about the M39 lens selection. If you love the 1950s looks in lenses, then this is a very good system. If you want a modern look, look for Folklander or consider upgrading to a Leica system. It's time for the verdict and uh, there will be two verdicts, so to speak. First, the unofficial verdict, no. Let's first do the official verdict. I'm gonna give you some advice. And the advice is, of course, this is the better camera, I'm afraid to say so. Uh, Built-in light meter, a much bigger, more comfortable viewfinder with a lot of frame lines, parallax correction, uh, everything that you'd ever wish for in a rangefinder camera. Uh, on the downside, it uh, still has the old type shutter that maxes out at 1 over 1,000th of a second and all Leica rangefinders do that, save the digital models. You have to live with it. Having said so, use a yellow filter, don't always shop for f0.95 lenses uh, and keep in mind that if you're shooting negative film you can always overexpose and then 1 over 1,000th of a second almost always works. Um, it doesn't have a self-timer, which I find amazing, given how expensive this camera even was when it was new. And um, the build quality is not as nice as with the older models, M2, M3, M4. Um, apart from that, it's insanely expensive, so uh, that's why I brought this one, right? And now we come to the unofficial confession. Um, I know this is the more desirable camera, but personally, I prefer the Canon. It just speaks more to me. I love the fit and finish of this 5 Series Canons. They really may be the best fit and finish of all the Canon rangefinder models. It feels better than the M6, more heavy, especially the chroming is awesome. If I want a Leica with the same or even better finish, I have to go M2, M3, maybe the early M4. And apart from that, um, the viewfinder system, I also love it. For me, the squinty viewfinder is not too squinty and I love the zoom feature. I just love shooting this thing. And I don't mind that it doesn't have a light meter because it's got a self timer, which I find more interesting. So for me, the Canon wins. And apart from that, you can get this for like 400 euros with a lens. It's a tenth of the price. Need I say more? Uh, so the choice is up to you. I think it's a great, 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 um, alternative to a Leica M system. Oh, another reason why I'm so much in love with this camera, look at this beautiful rewind crank. It jumps out like this and then you can rewind your film, pops in. Yeah, it's just so nicely made. So I hope you liked and enjoyed this episode. And by the way, camera A is the Leica M6 with the Leica Zoomicron 50 version 5, uh, the one from the 90s. And uh, camera B was the Canon 
Fifel with a 1953 to 56 Canon 50 mil f 1.8 on it. And maybe you saw it because the Canon images maybe have a little, little bit less contrast. But keep in mind, I'm scanning these images. I have to do some post-processing so the scans look right. So that could also be the case. I think both cameras did a really great job there, if you ask me. So again, I hope you liked this episode. Uh, if you did so, then please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. I appreciate your support. Hit the small bell button for notifications. You know the drill. I hope you have a great time. Live long and prosper. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.